Hi, this is Jeff Spence, your Math 135 instructor for the Community College of Denver. This is my video lecture over to Section 3.6. Section 3.6 is titled Chebyshev's Rule and the Empirical Rule, but I'm only actually going to talk about the Empirical Rule because uh, the Empirical Rule goes over, uh, or applies, excuse me, to bell-shaped data sets, which are extremely popular in, in the real world and in this Intro to Stat course. So we're going to skip Chebyshev's Rules. It's the first section. You can skip that part of the reading if you uh, check out the reading. So the empirical rule, uh, when the data is bell-shaped, the empirical rule is a little bit better than Chebyshev's rule. But the key thing is that we can only apply the empirical rule when the data set is bell-shaped. All right, so bell-shaped, remember, this is our picture that we're talking about. So the empirical rule, this empirical rule will be stated on your formula sheet, these first three lines right here. So if the distribution is bell-shaped, about 60% of the data values fall within one standard deviation of the mean. Let me give you a picture of that. What they're saying here is here's the normal distribution, the mean. Remember, if the mean is, uh, the means, the z-score, excuse me, for the mean is zero. And notice that's right here in the middle for the bell shape, along with the mean and, the, or sorry, the median and the mode are all in the same spot. 68% of the data in this like orangish, tangish region are within one standard deviation of the mean. By within one standard deviation, we mean one standard deviation below to one standard deviation above. Most of the data, 68% is well over half of the data, lies within one standard deviation. That should make sense. Most people score towards the average on the SAT, or most people are about the average height and uh, don't deviate too far from that average height. So 68% of the data is within one standard deviation. That's quite a lot. Then the next rule, or next line in the rules, will tell you that 95% of the data values fall within two standard deviations of the mean. So in this picture here, it's showing you that in these green regions, it shows about, um, sorry, the light green regions, is that you have about 13.5% of the data. Now why is it 13.5? Well, if you have 68% within one standard deviation, 68% within one, and then 95% within two, from 68 to 95, you gain 27%. In other words, 95 minus 68 is 27%. And you gain that 27% equally in these two portions because this is a bell-shaped curve that's symmetric. So 27 divided by two is your 13.5. That's how you get 13.5% between negative one standard deviation and, and uh, negative two standard deviations and one standard deviation above and two standard deviations above. However, though, from negative two standard deviations to positive two standard deviations, 95% of the data is within that range. The last line uh, that I'll give you is that 99.7, which is basically almost everything, uh, all, all the data is within three standard deviations of the mean. So uh, to break down this curve here into the, the last, or sorry, the, these sections, we go from 95 within two standard deviations to 99.7 within three. So if 99.7 is within three and 95 was, is within two standard deviations, then 99.7 minus 95 is 4.7. And 4.7 divided by two, because we have two equal regions here, is 2.35 and that's how they get that percent. Lastly, 99.7% isn't all the data. So there's an extra 0.3% left behind and that's the percentage of data that is beyond three standard deviations. Beyond three to the right and beyond three to the left. So if you take 0.3 and divide it by two, 0.15 of the percent of the data is below three standard deviations and 0.15% of the data is above three standard deviations. That's not much of a percent. 0.15 is less than 1%. It's less than one half of a percent. That's very rare to be beyond three standard deviations of the mean. So generally, we can approximate using the empirical rule data shapes that are approximately bell-shaped and, uh, and have these percent approximations about what percent of the data lies within certain values. What we're going to do on our classwork is apply these percentages and these z-scores to actual data values, such as SAT scores or heights. And we're going to do that in our classwork, and we'll see you on class when we do that.